me. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I have for you today another tremendously exciting, wildly boring, but for some reason we keep on watching makeup declutter. I have a large amount of makeup, but I don't have as much as some people might expect. Um, other than my eyeshadow palettes, I have a very moderate amount of makeup. So I'm probably gonna cluster most of them into one video. Minus the lippies, that's a whole other story. I don't even know if I want to do a video on those. Let me know if you really want to see it, then I will. Otherwise, ugh, that's gonna be a long one. So we're gonna go through the loose eyeshadows, the highlighters, the blushes, all those types of face products today in one video. So right here, what I have is mostly loose eyeshadows. There are a few other things like eyeliners and mascaras that probably need to be gone through too anyway. So what happens is that this stuff ends up being in sitting in my drawers and I forget that I have it. So this is partly to declutter and partly to kind of reinvest in what I already own. So maybe I'll stop buying stuff. All right, enough chatter. Let's get on with the declutter. So we got first here, a Luna liner, um, water resistant liquid eyeliner. I didn't even know I had this. I probably should try it out since I'm running out of my current black eyeliner. So I'll keep that. Then we have Dose of Colors. We have two Dose of Colors single eyeshadows. I think I bought these on clearance at Ulta. We have the shade Block Party and Night Sky. And I'll probably hang on to them, but just because I forgot that I bought them and they just sat in boxes, they've barely been swatched. They almost look like they're the same color, except one's green and one's more of silver. But pretty awesome looking shades, actually. So I'm gonna hang on to those for a while. Next, I have three shadows from Medusa's Makeup. I keep wanting to like their formula. I keep trying it out. However, I just feel that the shadows always look just a little bit muddy. I think that's the only word that I can use to describe them. They just look kind of muddy and they, the, the, they look pretty in the pan. Always, they always look pretty in the pan. But there's just no payoff. It just doesn't go anywhere. Look at that compared to the Dose of Color shadow. It's just very, it just looks muddy. I just, I just, I just don't like them. So I probably will, I probably will be decluttering all of these and maybe I'll finally just let go of that palette. Maybe I'll do a whole Medusa's makeup bundle. I have this Naked Cosmetics eyeshadow single. The only reason why I was kind of hanging onto this is because I thought it might be a dupe for the Jeffree Star Orgy palette. Um, so I haven't got around to testing that, so I'm gonna hang on to that for at least as long as that, just to see if it's a dupe. I have these three bomb single shadows, and what's funny is I have every single one of these larger palettes, as you saw in my eyeshadow declutter, and I kept every single one of those palettes, So that which means I have all of these shades and the reason why I don't declutter them is because the pans in the single eyeshadows are bigger than the eyeshadows that are in the palette and look at what a pretty shade that is that is just such a pretty shade I just can't I can't get rid of it so these I will be keeping I love these Next, I have this NYX Cosmetics Single Shadow. I don't even know where I got this. <laughs> um, I probably will declutter this because it's not something I ever use. It's decently pigmented. Um, I'll hang on to it for now, just in case. You never know when you're gonna need red. This is a space case never opened. I don't even think I looked in here to see what shade it is. Let's see what shade it is. Oh no, I have. It looks like that's been swatched. Ooh, that's actually very, very pretty. That It looks like nothing in the pan, 
but swatched, wow, that's a really pretty shade. Next, we have these two Suva shadows. I'm definitely keeping these. These are very, very pigmented. I really, actually, I actually really, really love Suva's, Suva's formula. However, since I have those other Suva shadows, I might just depot these and put them in another palette that I have. This is a MAC eyeshadow called Last Dance. It is such a pretty shade. but it's definitely an eyeshadow topper and that is what a eyeshadow topper is ladies and gentlemen not what came in you know what palette next i have an eyeshadow from beauty people and I, this is a korean brand and it is <laughs> such it's so sickening it's almost like pure pure pigment It is so pretty. It just turns any any eyeshadow look. It just kind of saves it. Like if you have an eyeshadow look going wrong, I just put this on top and it saves it. I love this. It's so pretty. Next, I have this Phase Zero, which is just a very, very neutral shade. It is swatched. It's not something I think I will use. I mean, it's pretty, but it's just very... I have a million shades and I know I'm never gonna reach for this, so this I think I will declutter. Next, I have a Fira Single Shadow. I ordered this off Wish with the intentions of testing it. I never did, I actually ended up using it. And that's because the shadow is actually really, really pigmented. It's really strikingly red. Swatch it right there. I mean, it's really, it's, it's shockingly good so i mean it's hard to find good red shades so i hang on to it just because wow it's it's super pigmented so i've actually ordered a few more of fira's eyeshadows just because this one's so good it makes me want to see what else they got not everything on wish is garbage my friend you just gotta know what you're looking for and fira so far i've actually had pretty good luck with them so they're very inexpensive it takes forever to get it but other than that you see well you see that I don't know what this is. <laughs> I got this in that Kat Von D mystery box and it's, I don't know if it's supposed to be an eyeshadow topper. I don't know what it's supposed to be, a highlighter. It doesn't really, you know, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't know what it wants to be. And I just, I don't even know. It's probably gonna end up drying up because I'm probably never gonna get rid of it. I, I don't know. I mean, what is, is it an eyeshadow? But I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't dry down. I, I don't know what it's supposed to be. I just, and it's not even that pretty. I don't, I, this one is definitely not my favorite Kat Von D product ever. So next we got the Marc Jacobs. These was from the Blitz Glitz series and they are, And they are so nice. I think they are so pretty. I have two of them. I have this shade, which is called Sequins. I just think it's so pretty. It's like a brownish purple duochrome. Just, oh, love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And it almost works as a base underneath other eyeshadows. It's just so pretty. The next one that I have is in the shade Topaz Flash. It's just, oh, it's such a pretty shade. I love it. So definitely not getting rid of those. I wish I had more of these. Next, I have these two colored rain shadows and I'm definitely hanging on to these. These, their shimmer formula is so good. I mean, these are very, very neutral shades. I probably won't reach for them a lot, but because of how pigmented and beautiful they are, I just can't get rid of them. And this is a single Pat McGrath shadow in the shade Celestial. And I don't know if I'm using it wrong or what's going on with the shade, but it is just not doing it for me for how much this shade cost. I think... I think it was $25, but I bought it when she was having that 20% off sale or something. So it was probably closer to 20, but still $20. And it looks decent, but it's, I mean, it's nothing to write home about. It's just, 
it's bare, it's not the most pigmented neutral shadow I've ever had. It's not the prettiest neutral shadow I've ever had. It's not the smoothest. I mean, there's nothing about it that's special. Like it feels like it could be a drugstore shadow. It's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing. I, so I probably will declutter this because it kind of makes me angry that this was so expensive. Maybe someone else knows how to make it work better than I do. I don't think it needs to be in my collection anymore. This is a Marc Jacobs Oh My God Omega shadow. I, I'm on the fence about this one. It is a really pretty shadow, but it's something that I probably wouldn't reach for very often. It's very smooth, it's, it's very pigmented, but there's nothing about it that just says, hey, I have to grab for that shadow. It's just, it's just, it's just a really pretty shadow. It's just something I don't know if I'll use. So I'm kind of on the fence with this one. I probably will declutter it. Next, I have an Anastasia Brow Dip pomade that is basically just hanging, which is basically just hanging out until my other one goes defunct as a backup. So obviously not getting rid of that one. This is still just, this one is just on standby. Next, we have this Kat Von D blush slash eyeshadow. I tried to get some use out of it. The blush shade wasn't really for me. It didn't really work for me as an eyeshadow. So I probably will declutter this also. Here we have two NAR shadows. This is the shade Domination. And we also have the shade, we have two NAR shadows in the shade Domination. And we have two NAR shadows. We have, we have two NAR shadows, one in the shade Domination and one in the shade Biarritz. The shade Domination, I, I'm i definitely gonna declutter because it doesn't do anything for me. It's It looks pretty in pan, but it's so, so there's nothing there. I mean, it's almost like it's supposed to be a blush, which actually it might be a really pretty blush, but it definitely wasn't supposed to be a blush. So I probably am gonna declutter this. Now this one, this one, is, the shade Biarritz is super smooth and it's super pigmented and it's great for airbrush, it's great for airbrushing out other looks. So I will hang on to this one. This is a Winky Luxe Single Shadow Diamond Powder and I think it's a great shade. I've used it quite a bit to do the same thing that I would use the other NARS shadow, except it's a little bit more of a warm tone. It's something that actually gets quite a bit of use. You can't tell from the camera, but that's actually quite deep in there. Next, we have a single shadow from the brand Innisfree. It's definitely more of an eyeshadow topper, but it is such a pretty eyeshadow topper. You can tell it's definitely a topper. It is quite sheer, but it has a, but it has quite an impressive sheen to it. It's such a pretty shade. I don't reach for it very often just because it is so sheer. I mean, for what this does, the MAC shade will do the exact same thing. and It's got a lot more pigment, so I don't have to put on as much. So I'm on the fence about this because I do really like the formula. It feels really, really nice. So I'll hang on to this one for a little while. It doesn't take much space. Next, I have three Urban Decay Next, I have three Urban Decay single shadows. Two of them are the exact same shade. I'm not gonna get rid of them because this shade is one of my favorite shades from Urban Decay. And this one's quite unique also. It's a multi, it's a duochrome that's really, really pretty. I hardly ever use it, but I know that I have, I just can't get rid of it just because of how pretty it is. Actually, the camera's not really doing it justice at all. It's got a greenish, brownish, goldish shift to it. It's such a pretty shade, can't get rid of it. So hang on to those. Then I have four ColourPop Super Shock, I have three ColourPop Super Shock shadows and one of their gel shadows, which I completely forgot that I had. It's just been sitting in my drawer. And it's a good thing I found it when it did because it looks like it's probably on its last few months here. So I got the Super Shock Shadows, which I'm definitely keeping. I actually use them quite a bit as toppers. They're very, they're very pretty, they're very pigmented, they're easy to use. So definitely we'll be keeping those. This one, I feel like I should just keep it because I, I spent money on it. I just completely forgot that I had it. 
it's really kind of hard. But I just bought some Duraline, so we'll see if that saves it. It looks like it was meant to be pretty back when I bought it. <laughs> but that's the problem with these gel... That's the problem... That's what the problem with these gel shadows is that they get hard really, really fast. And this has never been used. It's hardly ever been opened or anything. It's just the problem is it's more than a year old and it's starting to dry up. Next, I have two single shadows from the brand Flirt. There is a throwback, ladies. Who remembers this brand right here? And this used to be my favorite eyeshadow brand. It's when I first started working in kind of makeup where I worked in the beauty center of Kohl's when they first introduced their beauty. And this is one of their brands that they had. And look at that. <laughs> oh, it brings back memories. They, this brand is now defunct. They do not exist anymore, but it was one of, it was, it was very, it was very along the lines of Urban Decay. Their whole vibe, the color stories that they had, the things that they put out, is except it was marketed more towards teens. And I remember the formula being really, really good. And I bought the second hand off Mercari and this is not good <laughs> at all. It's chalk city. So I don't know if these were just bad shadows that they put out or maybe they're fake, but I don't think that they had dupes of these or fakes of these. I don't know what, but these, not, this one was the same way. They're just not good. So are they worth keeping for nostalgia? Mm, nah, they're not. I need to get rid of them. Next, we have another Wish eyeshadow brand. It's Sima Duo. It's supposed to be a duochrome shade. And when you open it up, it's actually really, really pretty. And it's super, 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 super wet. I don't think it's as multi-chrome as they try to make it out be, but it is very, very dense. It's, it goes on, but I don't think that it lasts very well. It's certainly not a good shadow by any means. It's cool. It's fun to play with because it's only a couple dollars, but if you see the, if you see any indie brands selling anything that looks like it's in this package, don't buy it. It's no bueno. It's fun for a couple dollars, but it's not worth 15 or 20 dollars. I promise you. Don't pay that. Don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. Next, I have a bunch of gel liners. The NYX liners, I probably would have decluttered them, except I'm getting some Duraline. So I want to see if that makes these work a little better. When I first bought them, it was so thick and hard. I just was like, this is, is if this is what NYX's formula is, I don't want to mess with it. But the Duraline could probably make it softer, and because it is so thick, it might actually be really cool with the Duraline. So I'll hang on to those until I get the Duraline to play with them and see if they're worth keeping. This I'm definitely keeping. It's two shades of eyeliner. The Tarte formula is actually really, really good. I actually use it quite a bit, as you can see there. So we'll be hanging on to that. Another NYX shadow that I haven't even opened yet, waiting to see if the Duraline makes it happen. Now this Morphe liner, it was supposed to be like some kind of metallic, intense, super amazing liner. And when I put my brush in it the first time, it was hard as a rock when I couldn't get any, get it to do anything. So, and now it's even harder. Like, I don't even think that Duraline can save it. It is Chonk City. So this one, this one's just going in the garbage. Another Tarte liner. I don't use it very often, but it is a unique color. So I think I should hang on to it when I want to do some special looks. Well, my memory card had run out of space. I didn't realize it. So there's that's why all the eyeshadows are cleaned up and we're just gonna kind of continue where I left off. Really the only thing that um, I didn't get a chance to go through was the mascaras, but you probably don't really don't care about the mascaras anyway. So let's just go over the last few eyeshadows. So we have this dip brow here that I use just a little bit. This is this is from Bang Beauty and it's a little, it used to be a little red for me, but now that I have red hair, I might be able to get a little bit more use out of it. So I will keep this and hang on to it just to see if it is something I can get some use out of before I declutter it. Now, then I have these two single eyeshadows. I have the Jeffree Star single shade, his first single shade ever, put it back. And it is a really good shade. It's not, you know, the most groundbreaking green ever, but it is a really pretty shade. 
metallic green and since I'm super into greens right now I definitely don't have it in me to get rid of it plus it was expensive it was eight dollars for this little pan so I'm, I can't get rid of that yet I need to get some use out of it I paid my money I need to get some use out of it then we have this Viseart single shade I think I got this from an Ipsy it's absolutely beautiful I don't think you can tell there but it's got this beautiful gold metallic sheen. I use this in my brow, in my upper brow quite a bit just to kind of highlight and diffuse. I absolutely love it. So we'll be hanging on to that. The last, the last bit of single shadows that I have is this bag of Nomad eyeshadows. I bought this, all of these eyeshadows when they were having a huge sale, they were getting rid of all of their single shadows for like $2 or a dollar something. So I had to go crazy and pick them up. I'm definitely keeping all of these even though I don't really use them that much because I want to use them. I just need to remember that I have them. So I'm just gonna go through them real quick so you can see the shades. And that's it for the single eyeshadows. Moving on to the blushes. All right, now we are going to move on to the blushes and bronzers. Like I stated before, I don't have a huge, 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 huge amount of makeup. I may have more than the common user, but I definitely don't have more than the common YouTuber. So this is all I have of both bronzers and blushes. So let's, but I know that there's more stuff that I should get rid of because I know that I'm not gonna use. So let's start right away. We have this Pacifica bronzer and blush duo. It's actually a pretty decent duo. I use both, as you can see, they both have gotten quite a bit of use. It's not, you know, the most groundbreaking of shades, but it works really, really good. This also works as a good contour. It's for my skin tone. So I will keep this one. I just have to remember that I have it. This is why we do these declutters. Then I have this Becca bronzer, it is absolutely beautiful. I am a glitter girl, although people tell me I shouldn't be because of my advanced age, but it is such a pretty bronzer when you just wanna go a little dewier, but not too sparkly. I mean, it's sparkly, but it's not too sparkly. It's really very subtle. So I absolutely love this bronzer, not getting rid of that one. This, the bomb, Take Home the Bronze Bronzer. Actually got a fair amount of use. I used it quite a bit. I don't think I'm going to use it anymore. I am going to declutter this one. This I only bought very recently and I bought it only because it was on clearance and I haven't used it at all. It still has the wrapping and shrink wrap and everything on it. I have no idea. I have a feeling I'm not gonna get any use out of this because that is so, so very dark, but the blush is very pretty. So. Um, definitely keeping this partly because of the packaging and the collector in me um, but just but mostly because I haven't tried it yet so keeping that one we have the note it is an orange blush in the shade desert rose and I did actually get a fair amount of use of it more than I thought I would have for considering how um, strange this shade is but I don't have too many shades like this so I want I want a more of an uh, warm tone look on my cheekies then this is something that I go to more than I realize so I should keep this one because I don't have a lot of blushes that color. Next we have this Anastasia Beverly Hills blush trio. I think almost everybody that has is into makeup has this because I've seen it in so many declutters and so many people's videos. Um, it's a very very pretty blush trio. There's a very like all these shades are usable for me. This is the one I'd probably be drawn to the most just because for some reason I am always drawn to these lighter pink shades, but I definitely can use all of these. It's just another one of those things that I don't reach for because I forget that I have it. This is a Morphe contour shade. I don't reach for this very often. I think I got it in an Ipsy or BoxyCharm or I have no idea, but it's not something I purchased on my own. 
Um, I have swatched it. I don't think that I use it very often. I feel like I probably should hang on to this for a little bit just to try to get some use out of it to see if it's worth it. And if not, declutter it. Next, we have this Laura Geller New York Baked Blush and Brighten in the shade Tropic Hues. And I absolutely love this blush. As you can see, it has gotten a fair amount of use because you know these baked blushes, they come in a perfectly round <laughs> sphere, but I have flattened that sphere down. So I absolutely love this blush so much that I bought another one. So <laughs> same exact shade, just because I knew that when this one was gone, if I couldn't find it, I'd be sad. So I have the spare just kind of hanging out. Next, we have the Ofra Cosmetics Madison Miller. I did get a fair use out of this too. It's just a very, very neutral, natural blush shade. It is the shade Sweet Stuff, and it actually really is nice. I probably should hang on to this. This is from the brand Space Case. It is another bronzer. It is a very pretty, it's slightly shimmery, just in a kind of a satiny way. Very, very sheer, so it makes it very buildable. So it's, if, you're, if you're struggling with the bronzer and the contour like I am, this might be really good for you just because you don't, it's a lot easier to build up than to start and then try to blend it out. So this is a really, really good one for people who like buildable coverage. And it also has a pretty dewy sheen. So I will hang on to this one. Next we have the matte blush in the shade Petal Power. Did I say matte? I meant MAC. I don't know why I said matte. Anyways, this is a beautiful blush. Very, very similar to the Laura Geller formula. Very, very pretty. It's got some gold fleck to it just to give a little bit of highlight to it. I really like this when I just want to kind of slap something glowy on without having to do a whole lot of extra stuff. So I will hang on to this one. We have, we have Lorac in the shade Flaunt. Another really pretty baked formula. I really, really love the baked formula. I think because of my dry skin, it goes on without adding too much texture and it just always has a nice glow on the skin. So I haven't used this a whole lot because again, I forget I have it, but I definitely need to try it out more because I know that Lorox highlighter formula is amazing. I have this Lime Crime in the shade Flash Drive. It is a cream blush and it's a really, really pretty shade. I just, I don't really use it. I feel like I should. I need to pull this out so that I can get some use out of it to see before it goes bad because it is cream, they go bad faster. So I'll hang on to this one. Actually, I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna leave this somewhere so I can leave it out. Next, we have the Ciate Baked Blush in the shade Halo. It's their Marbled Light in the shade Halo. This, it's a pretty shade. It's not something that I think I'll reach for. It's just a little bit too cool for me, I think. I like the warmer blushes. So, but maybe I should keep it just because I don't have a lot of cool tone blushes. Is anyone else as bad at this as I am? I, I'll keep this one. Next, I have these two Tarte mini blushes. Got a fair amount of use out of both of these. I uh, was gonna declutter them when I was thinking about it earlier, but I, it, I gotta keep them. Next we have Wander Beauty in the shade Trip to Costa Rica. Oh, did I even, did I even use this? Oh yeah, there's one little fingerprint there, of course. I honestly can't figure it out if it's a bronzer or if it's a highlighter. I don't know what it's supposed to be. It's gotta be a bronzer, but it's so light and it's got a slight shimmer to it. Now I'm curious about it. So now I gotta try it and see if it's something that I can use. So I'll keep that. This is the Balm Girl Powder Cheeks on the Go in the shade, I guess it's just the shade Girl Powder. I'm not, I'm not sure, but it's, you know, it's cute. It's really, really light, even too light for my pasty skin. I don't think this is 
the greatest shade for me. I think I will pass this on and I'll get rid of this one. This is from Sugar. I obviously use this quite a bit because it's actually a dent in the pan. Um, I don't really remember much about it actually. So this one, since I know I'm never gonna reach for it again, I think I'll pass this one on. We got the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzing powder. I did, I did use it a little bit. I don't think I'll ever use this one though because since I did get the whole palette, I might as well just get rid of this. Next we have the Pretty Vulgar. This is super pink. It is so pink, but it's beautiful. It goes beautiful on the skin. It is such a pretty shade. Let me... It is such a pretty shade. It doesn't go on as pink as you would think. And it's just got, it just looks so nice on the skin. Pretty Vulgar is pretty hit or miss. Wah, 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 wah. But I do love the packaging and I love this shade. I think it's very unique. So I will hang on to this. Next is another one from Pretty Vulgar. It is the shade Shimmering Swan. It is a highlighter. It is actually a really pretty shade, but it's a little dry and chunky for me. I think that I might declutter this. Next, we have the Tarte Amazonian Clay Bronzer. <laughs> it's another thing that I forget that I have. I got it in some bundle or something like that. And I've, I have used it a little bit, but I forgot that I have it. So I think I need to put this out and back into my rotation. And I think I'm gonna keep this. I have a smaller mini version of the same thing. I'm not sure that they're the exact same shade. Let's see. Yep, they are the exact same shade. So I think I could safely declutter this one just to make some more space. And that's what we ended up decluttering. Not as much as I had hoped, but you know, considering the amount that I have overall, I think that's a decent amount. Okay, and here we have the powdered highlighters. And looking at it right now, I have a feeling I'm hardly gonna be able to get rid of anything, but let's go through it anyway and see if I'm wrong. So the first thing that we got here, actually this was too dark for me. It's really pretty. It's from the Beauty Bakery. It always comes in this really cute food shape packaging. But this particular shade, Frosted, was just, it was just too dark on my skin. I can't, I can't even really use it as an eyeshadow. It's, it's just, it's just not the right fit for me. So I will probably be passing this on since I only used it once. I could probably put this in a used bundle or something like that. So I will declutter this. Next we have Zodiac Cosmetics. I just did a review on their brand and oh my gosh, I love their formulas. And this highlighter is absolutely stunning and I love it. It's so blinding, so just be careful about that. It is the shade Apollo. We'll be keeping this. I have another one that I got in a trend mood box and it is also another highlighter, which is obviously way, way too dark for me. But this one I was able to use as an eyeshadow and it was absolutely stunning. This is the shade Zeus. So I'll be keeping that, but I may need to move it in where it's stored because I need to, it needs to be put with the eyeshadow so I actually remember to use it. Okay, the next we have this Urban Decay Space Powder and it is Sparkle City. It is so glittery. It's not, I don't know if you could really use it as a practical highlighter because of how glittery it is, other than, you know, if you're trying to go for a fairy look or it could definitely be a really nice eyeshadow topper. So because I am a sparkle glitter whore and I think the packaging is so cute and it's got this little brush down here, I can't get rid of this. Next, I got this in one of my boxes and it's from Floss and it's kind of like a hybrid between powder and cream, but it's really very, very nice. And it goes on the skin very natural. Once it's blended, it looks very, very natural, gives it a very natural glow. Probably wasn't the best idea to put it on the vein, but you get the idea. So I do think I'm gonna keep this, especially those days where I want to look a little bit more fresh and natural. This Beauty Pot Trio by Pop Sugar, I don't even know why I bought this. I got it on Boxy Pop Up, and it has the blush, a very boring looking highlighter, which I didn't actually swatch. 
and a bronzing shade. The blush is really pretty. I actually probably would use the blush if I actually had it out and pulled it out, but the highlighter is blah, and the bronzer, I don't need it. So I mean, I might declutter this. I just don't think I'm going to use it. This is Jeffree Star Candy Apple Drip. I can't remember if I got this in a mystery box or what. I probably got it in a mystery box, so it's not a shade that I would ever buy. Um, but it's actually really, really, really pretty but not as a highlighter. It's definitely more of an eyeshadow topper. I could never see me wearing that on my face as a highlighter, except for maybe a costume look, but it is really pretty. I, I can't get rid of it because especially since I'm so into greens right now, so I will hang on to that. I have these two Makeup Revolution strobe highlighters. I just picked them up because I knew that they were duochrome just by looking at them. And they are super pretty. Well, there it looks dull, dull, dull. But on the hand, it's actually very, very pretty. It's got like a blue shift to it. And this one is also very pretty, but I'm not really wild about the texture of the formula. It's kind of dry. It's kind of dusty. It just doesn't feel good. I might, I might declutter these. This has been one of my favorite highlighters of all time. As you can see, it's one of the few products that I've actually hit pan on. This is Lorac Highlighter in the shade Starlight. It is so pretty. I actually think that I might repurchase this. And I actually forgot about it. I just, when I saw this, I actually got a little excited. I was like, oh yeah, that highlighter. So I'm gonna pull this out into my rotation because this highlighter is amazing. If you ever see this at a TJ Maxx or something like that, pick it up because it is so pretty. It's like glass on the skin. Next, we have this Laura Geller New York highlighter. I love this formula in the shade Gilded Honey. It's so pretty. It's It looks on the skin a little bit more natural than it does in the pan. So actually, you know, for more of, more of a bronze summer look, it actually is really, really pretty, even on my pasty ass skin. So I will keep this one. This is from Wander Beauty, and this is in the shade After Hours. I'm not a huge fan of Wander Beauty's formulas most of the time, but this one is actually really, really nice. It's got a very, very natural golden sheen, more on the natural side, and can be used for everyday looks. This is actually really, really pretty. So, and it doesn't take up much space, so we'll just keep this. Next, we have the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder. And it's pretty, you know, it's nice, It's but it's really, really dull. Like there isn't much going on there. I, For someone that doesn't like to let people know that they wear a highlighter but still want that highlighter look, this is actually would be pretty good, you know? But it's not something I need in my collection, so I'll declutter this. This is from the Bretman Rock Wet n Wild collection, and I have to tell you this whole collection, the whole collection, everything that I bought from the lip gloss, the brushes, the palette, everything I've gotten in this collection has been so pretty. And I can't remember what this retailed for, I think maybe it was $8, but it's got two different highlighters here. It's got a little bit more of a nighttime funky highlighter to it. And this is really, really, really close to gag me, except it's got a little bit more pink in it. So pretty, it's such a pretty highlighter. And then there is the gold side, which is more of a natural beachy sheen. Also so pretty. For being a drugstore brand and being on the less expensive of the drugstore brands, this is such a great highlighter. I re highly recommend this. If you see this in the drugstore and you are looking for some new kind of bang for your cheeks, then pick this up. Next, we have the Fenty Beauty, and it is absolutely stunning. <laughs> I mean, that is rich rich. That just screams money to me, except it's not something I'd probably use as a highlighter. It's just a little too loud for me to be able to pull it off, but as an eyeshadow or eyeshadow topper, oh, like if I just want an extra little bling on my eyes, 
I can't get rid of this, but I probably need to move this one too into the eyeshadow so that I remember that I have it so it gets into my rotation. Next, we have Innisfree, and this is, an, this is a Korean makeup brand, and they, all their products are pretty minimal, but they're very, very nice. Like it's just got a nice pink shine to it. Very, very, very minimal. But the formula is nice. It goes nice on the skin. It feels nice. So because I don't have many like this, I will hang on to this one. Next we have from Kvos, we have Fairy Dust Pressed Highlighter. And this one's pretty. I'm not saying it's not nice. There's just nothing to it. Like it's just, it's just not. I don't think I need it. Another Laura Gela highlighter in the shade Champagne Pink. And as you can see, I got a fair use out of it already. It's, I haven't come close to hitting pan, but you can definitely see that I have put some wear into this. That's actually a very, very nice highlighter. I really like the way it looks on the cheeks. I like the way it feels on the skin. So, um, yeah, I'll keep this. These aren't, these are annoying to, these are annoying to store though because of the way they're shaped. That's the only thing that kind of pushes me over the edge a little bit. Next, we have Medusa's Makeup Highlighter in the shade Luminous Highlighter Hotel. And this is actually quite decent. Uh, of all the Medusa's makeup products, this is probably the one that I'm leaning towards keeping. The formula isn't dusty. It looks nice on the skin. And I don't really have a shade like this in my collection. So I think I will hang on to this one. It's not, there we go. We have this little highlighter here in the shade Glisten. And it's not a bad highlighter and the formula is okay. It's just, I don't think I need it. I can declutter this one. Next, we have these two Artist Couture. <laughs> and as you can see, one's got a lot more love than the other one. <laughs> I had one's in the shade Illuminati and, and the other's in the shade Purple Dream. These highlighters are so pretty. This is the shade Illuminati and it's very, very gold, but it's not too gold and it's, but it's really, really bright. So many different types of skin tones can pull that off. It is so pretty. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. This other shade is Purple Dream. And this is a little bit more fairy-esque, but oh my gosh, is it so pretty. Put it somewhere where you can just see it. It's got a lot more extra oomph to it, but it kind of melts into the skin without adding to the texture. It's just so, so, so pretty. I love this shade, definitely keeping those. That is all of the powder highlighters. I'm sure I'll come across more at some point, but that is it for now. Now we're gonna move on to the liquids. Okay, now we have the gel and liquid highlighters, and it's probably gonna be hard for me to get rid of a lot of these because it's not something that I can pass on super easily because it isn't super sanitary to pass these things on. And I'm not one for waste and throwing things away, so I probably won't declutter things unless it's just bad or I think it's something that could be sanitized. <clears throat> the first that we have is this Fenty Beauty in the shade Unicorn. And I swatched it. It's just not something that I think that I would ever use, even like in a fantasy setting, even though it's a pretty color. It's just not something I could see myself using ever or ever reaching for. So it's easy to sanitize. So I, and it's in really good shape. So I probably will pass this on. This is Becca Glow Glaze Stick in the shade, in the shade Skin Love. I don't remember where I picked this up. I probably got it in a boxy charm. And same thing, it's not something that I think I'll ever use. For some reason, these type of highlighters, they don't really work for me. They don't really show up on my skin. It's, and it just looks, makes me feel waxy. And it, when my, the rest of my skin is dry, it's just, it doesn't work for me. So I will probably pass this on also. Next, we have the Siate stick. 
<laughs> I keep getting these. I have another one that's not even opened. And I because this, I because I use this and I knew that nobody else would want it after I used it, that's the only reason why I hung on to it. But it does absolutely nothing. It feels like putting Vaseline on the face. It looks like Vaseline on the face. It's I don't know who this is for. I don't I mean, I'm sure it's not Vaseline. <laughs> I just don't know who this is for. If you like this product, tell me how you use it. Maybe I'm using it wrong. I'm so curious about this product. I just, I don't get it. It's the Ciate Dewy Sticks. Next, we have this Ciate London Dewy Sticks. Next, we have the two Tutti Fruity highlighters. There might have been more in this line. These are the only ones that I got my hands on. This is in the shade Strawberry Sparkle and Pink Lemonade. And I love these. I love these so much. They don't look like anything in the container there, but swatched. They are so pretty. They're so pretty and they smell delicious. Oh my God. I don't know why I love everything in this line so much, except for the foundation. The foundation does not work for me at all. Oh, I take that back. Except for the foundation and the Illuminator uh, Fresh Face, Luminase face primer. I don't know why this is in with the highlighters. Maybe I thought it was a highlighter and that's why it's in here. I don't know. Maybe I should give this another try. Next we have the Cover Effects Dewy Drops. This is the Glitter Drops and this is a Custom Enhancer Drops. I honestly don't know what the Custom Enhancer Drops are supposed to be for. It doesn't really swatch like anything. It makes me it makes me feel like I know nada about makeup. And honestly, I probably in the grand scheme of things don't. But I mean, it looks luminous there and then it just kind of blends out to nothing. Well, on camera it looks like something, but it's not something that I'm ever going to reach for. This is not something I'll ever reach for, but it's something that is hard to pass on because it's not super sanitary because you never know where that tip's been. So I'll hang on to this just because I don't want to see it get thrown away. But this one right here is a whole other story. It is super, super, super sexy. It's shimmery, it is loud, it is gorgeous. It has got this beautiful pink, super, I mean, when it says sparkly, it is sparkly. I love it. <laughs> I can't obviously wear it as a highlighter, but I don't think it's meant to be a high highlighter. I think it's more like body sparkle. So it could also be used for that or an eyeshadow topper. So this one I love. I'm not saying I'll reach for it all the time, but I know that I'll reach for this. This is from Hourglass in the shade Champagne Flash. And I got this at Boxy Pop-Up and it was such an amazing price. I think it was like something like $12 or something. Really, really almost drugstore price. So I grabbed it real fast and it is beautiful. It is such a pretty shade. It goes on so smooth. It's not as greasy as a lot of these other types of formulas. I don't usually like these types of formulas on my cheeks for blush or highlighter or anything, but this one is really, really nice. So we'll definitely be hanging onto this. Next, we have the Shimmering Skin Perfector, and I've tried to wear this a couple ways, and I'm still not sure if I like it. Like, I know that I didn't hate it. I tried it under my foundation. I tried it mixed with my foundation. It's just, I mean, it's probably too dark for me. That's, that's the main thing. It's, that's, the glitter is there. So, it's another thing that I feel like I have to keep and keep trying to love because I can't throw it away because I can't pass this on. It's not, that's not very cleanly. So this one I'll probably hang on to. Try to use it a little bit more until it goes bad. Next we have the uh, a flesh highlighter in the shade Startle. And this, I tried it, and as you can see, that's not the highlighter shade, that's my foundation. So when I put this on my foundation, it basically just stripped off my foundation. <laughs> 
I mean, it seems like it would be pretty, like it's not an uh, unattractive shade. It just smeared my foundation everywhere. So this I'm gonna pass on just because if I can't use it, why would I keep it? So I'll sanitize this and pass this on. Next, we have this Milk Makeup Holographic Stick, and I'm on the fence about whether or not I should open this or just try to pass this on because it's something that I know a lot of other people would want. I'm just not sure that if I'm going to use it. So I'm on the fence. If you've used this and you know anything about this, let me know how you love it. And maybe I'll keep it or maybe I'll pass it on. Okay, let's move on. I'm getting rid of a lot more of these than I thought I would. I'm proud of myself. Next, we have Iconic and Suva Beauty Illuminator. And I gotta tell you, with Iconic's products, I have never really been wild about any of their products. This isn't bad, but there's nothing to it. Like it doesn't really show up on the face. It's not, it just makes, it gets, it gives your face a kind of wet look, I guess, without making it sticky. So, I mean, there's that. If that's what you're looking for, then you'd probably like this. Then we have Suva Beauty. They're, most of their stuff is very, very nice. If anything, a little boring, but very nice. It's usually very nice product. Yeah, see, that's very, very pretty. It's very, very thick. It blends out nice. It's striking, but it's not like, whoa, what the heck is going on striking? It's very, very subtle and pretty. This is a very nice highlighter. Oh, but apparently I have two of them. I think they're in the exact same shade. How did that happen? Who knows? But I mean, this is something that I could pass on maybe to a family member, but the only person who might wear this is my sister. So if she wants it, you got it, sis, it's yours. But it's not something that I would feel comfortable passing on to someone else. The last two ones, we have the Trustique Highlighting Stick. These are the last two. I have the Trustique Highlighting Pen. And it's okay. It's just okay. It's it doesn't go on greasy on the face. It's but it's, it's it's a pretty shade. It's natural. It's not something I will probably ever reach for, so I might declutter this cuz it's easy to sanitize. This it might have one day once upon a time be really good. This is the Alginist Reveal Concentrated Luminizing Drops Biotechnology from San Francisco. This, it might have been a good product once upon a time, but now it's, it is a cloppy, cloppy mess. And it goes on the hand, a cloppy, cloppy mess. And it doesn't do anything when you blend it out. So it's, I mean, it's like almost like it just disappears. Which is maybe what they were going for, but not something that I would use. I mean, it's, I mean, there's, there's nothing there. So, I mean, I don't know if it's just gone bad or what. I probably should just throw this, I probably should just throw this away because it might just be an expired product. And that is all for the declutter. If you like these types of videos, please like, subscribe, check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Carpe Cynthia, and let me know what you thought about this declutter. Do you have any of these products? Do you think you would have kept? Do you think you would have tossed some of the products that I talked about in this video? Please let me know and leave me some comments. Thank you very much, everybody, and I'll see you next time.